view of the Theodore Zimmerman. Um, my name is Kenneth Stockley, and uh, the cameraman this morning is Melvin Mitchell. We're doing this for the Earlville Historical Society, uh, talking to people around Earlville who uh, recall the town, and recall uh, memories of days gone by, and where things were, and how they got to be like they are today. The date is um, March 7, 1987, and we're down here in the the basement rooms, I guess you'd call them, the meeting rooms of the Earlville Bank. And so, Ted? Uh, well, you brought up the bank. <laughs> it just came to mind. Okay. The bank, uh, when I was going to high school, the old bank, I uh, was janitor. Oh, was that right? Yeah. yeah. After school, I would go and clean up. Early in the morning, I'd go tend the furnace and so on. Now, which bank was, which one was that? The one on the corner? It was new then. No, the, the, the one on the, the one, the one where, on, where the restaurant is now. That's the right. old bank there. Yeah. Oh. That's the way I picked up a that's, few pennies. That's the way, that, that was one of your, your, your <laughs> earlier jobs. Huh? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, uh, Ted, you've been around here all your life in this community then. You, yes. were, you were born here. Uh, that's right. Do you mind telling us about the, about the year or about the date? <laughs> I was born in 1905. 1905. Okay. <laughs> and, and you know where, where were you born in... in uh, in the home, uh, in a home here, probably. Yes, uh, it was. I think just across from the house, just across from uh, St. Teresa's Church. Cro across from the Catholic that, Church. Mm -hmm. Of course, don't remember correctly, but as I remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, your early years were spent uh, in and around different. You lived in different places, probably uh, around there a lot. You mentioned you lived up over the hotel for a while. Yes, the three-story building in town. Oh, the three-story one. Yeah, yeah. And then you went through the Earlville uh, school system right from the start all That's the right. way. And that, which building, now which school building was, would that be? That would be the one that was just torn down? Yes. Recently? The one that was uh, in 1900, the uh, board of directors of the school voted $12,000 to build the school. And that was the two story one that was just, uh, just torn, torn down. down recently. And now that was grade school and uh, high school? That's right. The uh, the grade school was on the first floor. The high school was on the second, second floor. floor. They had uh, ag. They had one animal husband or something. Oh, was that right? Ag and uh, science and uh, home economics was in the basement. Oh, well, they had, they had a pretty yeah, pretty broad spectrum there. Didn't they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember. Uh, for years, I think on the on the uh, entryway, it said there was 1900. That's there, right. So that was easy to remember when that building was built. That's right. And I, twelve thousand dollars. I recall. <laughs> I recall. Uh, uh, I don't remember if you were still on the school board then, but I remember I was on the school board when it was torn down, and I, that was kind of a kind of a sad feeling to see that building go. That's right. And the big rock out in front. You know, yeah. I wasn't on the board at that time. I, mm -hmm. uh, the big rock out in front that one of the classes had. Uh, Donated as a landmark or something. That's right. That was what was moved. Well, let's get on with uh, talking about you a little bit. Uh, now, your father's name and mother's name, uh, your, were you named after your father? Is that right? Well, to the extent that he was Theodore and I am Theodore. And what was his, what, what, let's see, you're, you're Theodore Oscar? Is that your? Yes. Theodore Oscar? I don't mention that. Oh, okay. Well, I just want to get the T.O. T.O. I didn't really, I wasn't just sure what the O stood for. Mother, Your mother was, mother was Edith Turk. Edith uh, Turk. And you had a brother? Paul. Brother Paul. And Paul was, what, older or younger? He was two years older. He was two, two years older than you. And Paul, for a number of years, a uh, long time, was the postmaster. Yes. I don't remember the exact number of years, but it was uh, quite a number, quite a period. I remember Paul uh, well when uh, we had the country, uh, country uh, delivery of mail, you know, and, oh, yeah, and sure. sometimes when the, when the, they couldn't get through, we'd come into the, to the post office and uh, all give us the mail. So, uh, getting back to school, I guess, you went through the grade school here, and then in high school, I presume is where your first athletic ability maybe showed up a little more. I, I don't, I mean, that's when, you, that's the first I recall in looking uh, through yearbooks is seeing some of these teams mm -hmm. that you were playing on that did pretty well uh, from Earlville. Do you have any... Uh, well, the first <laughs> basketball experience that I had, we played in a skating rink uh, just uh, to the, across the road, just west of the library. West of the library? Yeah. Skating rink was A there. skating rink oh. with the canvas uh, cover and so on. 
Oh, like and a tent? Like a tent? Yeah, it was. Tent. Oh, yeah, really. And you played basketball on that floor? I played so. basketball on that That's the first, the first I uh, experienced on hand. Well, that was probably before uh, you went to high school. Right? Yes. You were in grade school. grade school. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. now, the new, now, the old gym, uh, I mean, the gym that was torn down was constructed probably about the time you uh, yeah, in the 20s, were, uh, I think. were in. So you had a good gym to play in then in high school? Yes. Yeah. And what what kind of uh, do you remember any of the records that your teams uh, at that time the teams you played on? Uh, oh yes. I imagine yeah. they, some of them. I know some of them won a little ten. That's right. And uh, they also did well in, in the uh, in the state tournaments. And uh, we for a period there about three or four years we pretty well dominated uh, the little ten conference and uh, the area and the. the uh, District tournaments. The district, the IH, IHSA district yes. tournaments. And of course, at that time, uh, the tournaments, they didn't have large schools and small schools and so on divided. If you went into the tournament, you played. Uh, oh, you played like Mendota or Iowa or any, anyone who happened to be in. Yes. Uh, who happened to have gone that far. So right. it wasn't Class A and so on like they have now, divided up by uh, school population. That's right. What position did you play mostly? I was forward. Forward, yeah. yeah. I was supposed to get baskets. <laughs> I, I remember uh, uh, in those days, there were, really, there weren't, it seemed like there weren't so many real tall fellas playing either, were there? Well, the tall fellas, uh, at the time, they'd say, well, why don't you come out for basketball? Oh, I'm too big and too slow. Uh -huh. They they really did, didn't make an attempt to develop. I see. So uh, our center was 6'2", uh, something like that. Who were some of the players? Uh, Harold Torman was the... Oh, Harold Torman from Papa. Uh -huh. Red Guerrero, I don't know if you remember Red. I remember remember him. I remember uh, people speaking of him. Lloyd Cossert, my cousin. Mm -hmm. Lloyd Graham, mm -hmm. he was the other forward. And uh, we played, uh, oh, uh, Joliet had just built a new school and gymnasium, where, which is now the Central School in Joliet. Joliet. Mm -hmm. And uh, they wanted to dedicate the gym, so they invited us in to play. Earl Hill, they Earl to play yes, the and we went in and beat them. <laughs> oh, Sarah. Oh, they, they wish they hadn't invited you after yeah, we I, yeah. I always rather enjoyed that. And one of the players, as, if you've been there, you know that the school is a large one. And uh, one of the squad got out into the school and got lost. Oh, and, uh, one of the Earl players got <laughs> yes. lost? Oh, we were right. just wondered where he was and he <laughs> finally showed up just before we were ready to start the ball game. But we got a big... Uh, buzz out of it yeah. because uh, we beat Joliet that's, on the home floor. That's pretty dedicated good. their gym for it. Probably, <laughs> probably never been done, done better, never been done since then. Probably. So. Who was your coach? LB Man. He was LB Man was superintendent. superintendent, and he was your coach. That's right. And there was at least two or three or four years there that Earl really was at the top of the. Oh yeah. Uh, of yeah the, we, of the, <clears> when we finally, <clears throat> excuse me, when we finally got the gym. Uh, we developed some pretty good teams. Before that, Rollo had a gym, and they they were quite strong. But uh, we finally beat them on our home floor before I was in high school. And then in the 20s there, we were we were tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, was there were, were the uh, school colors still red and white then? Well, that's an interesting thing. Uh, this is early before I got into high school. Each class would have colors. And then they would have what they called a color fight. It wasn't really a fight. Once in a while, they'd wrestle a little. I don't think anyone ever got hurt, but the thing that tried to, yeah, yeah, the thing, uh, quote, color fight. Uh, the idea was that the, the class would try to get the colors on the highest point in Earlville, and of course the two oh, highest oh, points were the old city hall, uh -huh. the, the uh, flag mast, and the water tower. Uh -huh. and the, the water tower was a little higher. Yeah, yeah, just a little, and those were declared out of bounds, but uh, some mornings we'd get up, you know, over the years, and there would be colors in both places. Oh, oh. <laughs> one class competing against the other. That's right, yeah. The common practice was to tie the colors of the opposing class on your shoe and oh, walk on it. And walk on it. Yeah, uh, I was telling him. Well, uh, <laughs> then Earlville really didn't have school colors at that time. It was more class colors. Well, th apparently. Yeah. I can't remember now. Uh, that was, as I say, when uh, I was in the elementary school. Mm -hmm. and these things were entertaining to me, what the high school fellows were doing. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, like, when you got in high school, were the uniforms colored or just kind of plain uniforms? No, they, they were colored. And, of course, 
the uh, the trunks were long. They come down about to the oh, knee. Oh, sure. And everybody wore knee pads. And probably. everybody <laughs> everyone wore, wore knee pads. Wore knee pads right. Yeah. And some yeah. of them knee pads and elbow pads. Yeah. Oh, and elbow pads too. Elbow yeah. I, I remember when I was playing basketball, I had a terrible time with my knees. Oh man, I scraped them up all the time, and so I wore knee pads. Yeah. But you never see them wearing them anymore, much, do you? No. Uh, once in a while, particularly if the individual is injured, and needs a knee brace or, or something like that, or has had a bruise. Otherwise, you know, short shorts and, and uh, streamlined. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> very well. Well, we better move along. You uh, let's see. After you left Rovo, then uh, you uh, you you furthered your education where? The University of Chicago, uh, my brother had gone there a year or two, and of course Fritz Kreisler was uh, a graduating and made quite a name for himself. Oh yeah, do you want to say a word about Fritz Kreisler? I mean, just since he came from this town, we, we, we probably won't interview anyone who, who uh, knew him real well, uh, other than you perhaps. Yeah. So, uh, well, he was a fraternity brother of mine, and uh, this didn't influence him when I was out for athletics. I had to produce, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but he, uh, he was a fraternity brother of mine, and he uh, did coach the freshman basketball team when I was there. And for some reason, I, I'd look at those players and look at those other fellows and say, what am I doing out here with these fellows? <laughs> I, I this is at, at, the U, at the University of Chicago, the University. Uh -huh. and uh, I was elected captain of the, of the freshman team. Then uh, later, Fritz became varsity coach for the baseball team when I was pitching, and uh, he was a great coach did a tremendous job, and uh, we got along pretty well with you know, baseball. He, uh, so you played both both baseball and basketball at the university? Yes. The university. Did you, I forgot to ask you, did you play baseball in Rowe too? Then? Yes, at the, before we went. Jim Rowe was catcher. Oh, we, we did. <laughs> we we were the battery. We didn't get into to, to, uh, athletics uh, too much with Jim. But, no. but then in college, you were on some pretty good teams too, as I recall. Oh, yes. uh, uh, what do you, do you have? Uh, can you tell us anything about your records or what? Uh, well, uh, what occurred there? Not, not really. Uh, uh, we were playing, all, playing the Big Ten. Then? Oh yeah, we were playing in the Big Ten, and uh, as I indicated earlier here, my first game was playing against the University of Wisconsin. And uh, prior to the game, of course, they always picked the one that's supposed to win. Well, Wisconsin was the big favorite because they had Dr. Meanwell as coach who was supposed to be, you know, one of the top fellows. And uh, somehow the coach thought I'd better <laughs> go in. And uh, we beat them and overset their, overset their, uh, well, the wow. start of their record anyway. Wow. Uh, you, you played varsity, didn't you? You were yes. a starter. You, were a uh, starter. you couldn't play as a freshman, you couldn't, uh, which they do now. But with the sophomore, junior, and senior year, I played in the uh, same way when, uh, as far as the baseball was concerned. Now, I remember uh, <coughs> uh, when I was in school, and you were one of my instructors, uh, somewhere seeing a, a newspaper article uh, taken or from the paper about the time when you were playing, and it, there was, it was an article about the University of Chicago team that had mentioned that uh, the spectacled little Theodore Zimmerman set a new record tonight, or something like that. And I don't know what the record was, but you wore, you must have wore glasses, yeah. and you must have been fairly short at the time. Well, about my size, and I haven't grown my size. I see. Well, I didn't. I didn't. But were you shorter, maybe, than the average player then? Or well, there, no, were there, there, some there were some others in there. They had Stretch Murphy at Purdue, as I said, and they had Miller, who eventually was coach here mm -hmm. at Iowa. He was, mm -hmm. I don't know, six four, six five. So we had some tallmen, but then we also had. What, what is your height? Or what was five, your height? Seven, five seven. Five seven. Well, about 140 really pounds, good. which yeah. hits me pretty well right now. Well, that's, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> and you did wear glasses when you were playing. Uh, yes, playing uh, I went to go to the the baskets were always fuzzy, and they they uh, of course I've mentioned that you know just offhand I didn't think too much about it, but then it finally got to the coach, Coach Nargren, and he says, well, "How about some glasses?" So they had regular goggle-like mm -hmm. arrangement with mm -hmm. lenses. They're probably unbreakable type for uh, yeah, that's they, right. They wouldn't yeah. hurt your eyes. And yeah. uh, even uh, had a, they took my picture and it was in the Eastern newspapers because was, oh, because of those glasses. Because of the glasses. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, well, that's why they mentioned it maybe in this newspaper article. Oh, but it must have been kind of unusual at that right. time. Yeah. And uh, when I'd go, you know, the University of Iowa, or I remember particularly University of Michigan, uh, the players would ask. The coach, where I got the glasses uh, because uh, they yeah. perhaps were 
didn't have didn't 20 have, and 20 yeah. either. And now, and, and now since the advent of contact lenses, uh, that's not the problem it was no. at one time. But I, I recall that I had to wear glasses. I was always real nearsighted and uh, made a tremendous difference. I couldn't even see the, the basket without in glasses. In school, the way I discovered it, uh, they had written on the board some examination questions. And uh, I, I couldn't read them. Couldn't read them. Uh -huh. And uh, then I asked, you know, the other students, and I finally found out they could read them. So I knew. <laughs> you, knew you knew there had to be a reason. That's right. <laughs> yeah, there was something yeah. wrong. You know, one thing that always impressed me about uh, you, Ted, is uh, uh, when when you were instructor in high school, I always admired that Phi Beta Kappa pin on your on your <laughs> that you wore occasionally. Uh, could you tell us anything about that? Or uh, uh, this, this was earned in college, uh, of Yes, course. the University of Chicago, and uh, all colleges, just because they're a college or a university, they do not have a Phi Beta Kappa chapter. And, uh, of course, I had a pretty, pretty good record in the high school, and uh, it's based upon your academic record. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a special committee that uh, makes a selection, and uh, I was brought up, uh, you know, as a possible candidate, and then I was elected to Phi Beta Kappa. Quite, which, uh, it always has been an honor, and it still is, I guess. That's right, yeah. yes, it's, it still is. And the thing that interests me, I wear that, and you identified it, remember, because many people would say, what, what is that? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know. Well, the, the, uh, especially in your profession as a teacher, I think it's it's served you well in, in stimulating some students <laughs> into uh, well, asking, you. what is that, and, and how do you get it, and uh, uh, wonder if I could do that well, or something <laughs> like that, you know? But I, I always felt, I got satisfaction that uh, I was recognized academically, and incidentally at Chicago, I was also recommended for uh, a Rhodes Scholarship. Oh, is that so? I didn't make that. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the other basketball players uh, that I played with, he, he, he did. did become the Rhodes Scholar. But uh, yeah. just being nominated, uh, elected to Phi Beta Kappa, uh, getting varsity letters in uh, baseball and basketball, particularly basketball, uh, I, I felt, uh, well, I got personal satisfaction. And, and it showed that you were more of a well-rounded individual, which is probably what they were looking for <laughs> at, at that time also. That's right. Um, I was going to ask you, uh, was this in your senior year or after you graduated, or when did were you elected to Phi Beta Kappa? Senior year. Senior year. About the end of the uh, senior year, they made the election. And what was your uh, field or your curriculum uh, uh, field there? What was your main course of study? Economics. Economics, yeah. But then you you did get a master's, but was that later? Or education. Or was that, yeah. did you just go right on in no. the or, or Well, you, uh, I'd go summertime. Oh, summertime. Sometimes we'd, uh, after I got married, we'd both go in and I'd have an apartment in Chicago and my, do my work. And then, uh, uh, let's see, about 34, 35, I got my master's degree. Now, did you uh, plan to teach? When you uh, finished yeah, Chicago, <coughs> excuse me. I always wanted to uh, to teach, and I always enjoyed athletics and coaching. Yeah. So you made a good combination there. For me, it did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, now did I uh, let me get this? Did you were you married then uh, after right. college? Uh, after college. And before yeah. teaching, or, or or did you no. teach before you were married? Some. For I a started while? teaching in '28. I got married in '32. Oh, I see. And did you start? Where did you start teaching? Here. Here in Earl. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As, as what? As what? Capacity. Uh, social science teacher and coach. Social science and coach. And you did you just coach basketball or what else? Well, we had basketball and baseball. And you coached both. Oh, both we had, yes, we had yeah. some fine baseball teams. And, and you uh, you married about soon after then. Well, well soon four after, years. Four years after. Yeah. After. And, uh, at that time, I was starting to work on my master's degree. We better we better mention your wife's name and, and your family. Your, your wife is uh, Marion. What was her name? Gleason. Gleason. Yeah. And then you have a son? Joel. Son Joel. Yeah. yeah. Martin Joel. We don't use the Martin. Oh, name. I didn't we know. like the Joel. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Great. But he, uh, getting back to the athletics, then as a coach in Earlville, then you uh, had some pretty good records too, as I recall. Yes, we, we had some that we were proud of. No, uh, I, I recall uh, some of the teams. Uh, it seems to me it was around the. the 38, 39, somewhere in there, yeah, 37. Yeah. Uh, one, one of the teams. Do you have any recollections yes. of those? Uh, for the 16 years I was coached, we, we won 63% of our games. 63%. And uh, there were uh, a 
two teams that uh, was uh, felt particularly good about the team of 37-38 that uh, that Joliet played Dundee, who was ranked as the number one team in the state at that time, and they beat us uh, 32 to 28, and they ultimately were the state were champions. The state champions. So I always felt we could say, well, the state champions beat us four points. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> Who was on that team? Do you remember? Some of well, uh, Bob Strong, uh, Ray Enrich, oh. uh, let's see, uh, Louis Schreckengoss, oh, yeah, young Schreckengoss, uh, Paul Payne, Paul Payne, uh, who yes, went on yes. to the uh, uh, New York University and made a very fine record. I, as a basketball player. I remember Paul uh, when he, and his his family. When his father was a uh, Methodist, Methodist minister, minister, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that I think I hit all the bases on those. I think that I have five players. <laughs> I I think so. Pretty <laughs> close. Yeah. And, that, and then the uh, well, then I had then the team yeah. of 41. 41. They uh, they won 21 out of 25 games and had a record similar to the uh, team I've already mentioned. No, they didn't play the state champions, and uh, they scored 931 points to 695 for the opponents. And I've forgotten the exact figure, but somebody had figured out the fouls, and uh, our number of fouls were, I think, 100 and some less than our opponents had made. And uh, we always had a good tight defense, but in spite of playing it tight, the boys were good enough fast enough, clever enough, not to foul. <laughs> that's, and that's, and, and that, uh, if the opponent fouls, then, uh, the, the, and you're good on free throws, then uh, there's Nothing maybe better. maybe uh, all the advantage you need sometimes. That's right. Yeah. Just the margin. And, and, and 41, you're getting a little closer to my time now. <laughs> Let's see, uh, uh, Francis Poole, would he been Oh, yeah, he was on one of our better yeah. teams, yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember Francis. And, uh, yeah. he, was, he was a good basketball Maybe uh, Harger, one of the Harger's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Eventually, I think, moved to Aurora. See, was Bill Strong in there, or was he? Oh, uh, yeah, Bill was on the was on a, this uh, forty-one team. On the four, Bill, yeah. that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Bill was Bill would be about in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he was a, he was a good scorer. He was Maybe even Matasius, one of the Matasius. Don, Don, Matasius. Don, Don Matasius. Right. Yeah, I can. Uh, it's coming back to me. It's coming yeah. back to me. Well, that's it. You know, over here, I mean, they come floating. Yeah, in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Over there. and as many students as you've seen over the years too. It's kind of yeah. Well, they kind of all run together. Yeah. I think. Yeah. They asked me, uh, kids from Ottawa will come and play golf, you know. And they said, don't you remember me? I said, I've had 2,000 <laughs> yeah, students. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, some so of them get away, and then they get better looking as they get away. <laughs> and, uh, some of them fatten up a little. Certainly. Like Doc Fisher, I know, said the same thing. He said, I've seen, I've known so many people, had so many patients, nurses, and so on. People have come up to me, well, you delivered me. Don't you remember me? <laughs> How would I remember you? He said, you don't look the same. <laughs> Well, we better move along. Let's see. Okay. Uh, you were, uh, in addition to, is there anything more you want to say about your oval athletics uh, under your uh, No, well, the only thing is uh, we sort of emphasize base, or, uh, basketball, but the baseball teams, uh, I th had an unbeaten baseball team. Uh, we took the uh, conference uh, championship. Uh, we won the district championship. Uh, the baseball boys did a wonderful job. and. Uh, set up on a real nice record along with the tradition that goes back to 1920. And, and then baseball was dropped. Like, was it during the war? Or well, I, no? I can't it figure was, that out. It was dropped uh, soon after that. Well, we got, we got uh, you know, some new coaches and so on. And during this period when I was coaching the baseball team, there was only one spring when it was too wet and we couldn't complete our schedule. But we oh. would always see that our schedule was completed. I see. And then I think maybe the interest lagged a little or something and uh, they finally dropped it. And I did hear the criticism there were a lot of wet springs or cold springs when they said they couldn't get their, their games in. I did hear that. Yeah, yeah so well, sometimes that, uh, it all depends how how bad you want to play. you yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. that's right. right. Well, and then, and then you were a superintendent at Earlville for uh, five, years. five years. And then you moved to, uh, at least teaching, to uh, Ottawa? Well, uh, or, I was... Or uh, elsewhere? Yes, I was uh, director of student activities. I said I had a student council, we took care of the dances, we took care of the assembly programs, uh, and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I was social science, uh, history, mm -hmm. world, and U.S., and uh, I also was a uh, golf coach. Golf coach. Uh, and, uh, 
And that, uh, that brings us to the subject of golf, and uh, maybe we ought to say something about golf, uh, especially golf in Earlville. Uh, you've been long interested and uh, uh, a part of, the, of golfing in Earlville, and uh, maybe, maybe we could ask you, uh, do you have any uh, memories about how the golf course was first formed, or the country club was first started in Earlville, yeah. or where, where it was and uh, how it happened? It was, uh, it was started as a community affair, they thought, you know, would add something to the recreational opportunities here. And uh, they uh, purchased the land uh, south of the creek, which had been a pasture. And there was a flowing well out there, which we now have a pump on, and you get some nice oh, yes. cool water. Oh, yes. And they would tee off uh, up on the hill across the creek, uh, just to the east of where Doc. Yabsley, Dr. Yabsley's house. And they had a swinging bridge. That's kind of a hill there, like yes, there. they, they, they had tee a off on a high spot. And, uh, tee off on a high spot. Yeah. Would that be across, would they tee off across the creek? They tee off across, across the, creek. the creek. And then they added more land there. Yes, and more land to the uh, to the north until we now have about 37 acres. And uh, I've been a director since, uh, well, I've been a director for 36 years. Well, you're also the golf the golf instructor at the golf pro at Earlville, are <laughs> well, you not? Well, pro to the extent that uh, I've had experience teaching and so on, and of course that doesn't mean I play golf like the professionals. Well, uh, <laughs> you have uh, taught a lot of people how to play golf. So <laughs> that, uh, that's been uh, uh, an important function, I would think, of a golf pro, at least a golf instructor. I always feel happy when I see yeah. someone shooting well who's had uh, a lesson or two. Yes, yes. Uh, when was the, let's see, the golf, or the country club building uh, that we have now, that that was built later, I suppose, then. Yes. Uh, now, I think in the area of the 30s, uh, 35, 36, something like that. And, uh, of course... It's uh, a log cabin type of building. Yes. Then it was added on to... Added on the, what we call the pro shop, and, uh, of course, the breezeway there. And the area that now, uh, where the washrooms are located, uh, Part of that was a washroom, and part of it was the pro shop. I <laughs> seem to remember that. I seem to remember that yeah. because there's uh, on the on the east end of that little right. building, there's a, a square place in the wall you could where it used to be open. You could open it for uh, that's right for people to come up yeah. to buy whatever from the the, the pro shop. That's right. And that was yeah. that was the pro shop. <laughs> so the washrooms and the pro shop were all in that little building, and then that's right. Then it's been changed over to all washrooms and then the, the pro shop now that uh, your son, by the way, operates. Uh, That's right. Joel operates. Joel has his shop now in the new, newer pro shop. I heard, uh, this isn't historical, but I heard they've done some remodeling or something. Yes. Else, so. uh, I think the players, uh, when they come, will be quite pleased yeah. with uh, what's so happening inside. I don't like to talk about it. I'd like to have take a look see at it. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, we've been talking quite a while here. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, add to all this? Uh, any uh, reminiscences no, I, I or things think, you'd I like think, to? Uh, I think your uh, approach here has been very, very good, and you've uh, covered so many things. Uh, I just mentioned, uh, perhaps to you, a couple of things that sort of stood out in my mind. Uh, we had a balloon ascension. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, in the area out on the street here, just uh, north of the bank at that time was the P Brothers Department Store. Mm -hmm. Jim Rowe mentioned that, uh, the, and, the, the uh, P Brothers. He didn't mention yeah. the balloon, the balloon essentially. <laughs> he probably maybe doesn't, doesn't remember. But anyway, the hot air balloon, and it was filled out there, and then they had a parachute attached and a trapeze on the parachute. When they got the necessary amount of hot air, up they went, and I would judge 12, 15,000 feet, or oh, 1,500, 12, they quite did, a ways. Yeah, well, 1,200, 1,500. Yeah. And, uh, triggered something and the parachute would drop and he would <laughs> come to earth and we got a big thrill out of that. Yeah. And uh, then we also had an aeroplane uh, It came into town in crates and they put it together and flew it around the racetrack which was uh, north, just a little north uh, west of town. And then after this flight <laughs> around the track, they came down, of course, and they dismantled the plane, put it back in the crates, and went on oh, to their took, next took assignment. It, took it on to the next. Uh, well, uh, that racetrack, uh, I, I don't ever remember. I don't remember a racetrack. Where, uh, that was for horse racing. 
Well, yes, or and motorcycle racing. The things I remember, particularly the motorcycle where, racing. Where, you said northwest part of town? Yes, uh huh. You know the last house, well, not, yeah, the last house in the in northwest corner there? Out there about where Conklin's used to live? Oh, not that far. Not that far. Right, right oh. on the edge of town. Oh, on the edge of town. Okay. Yeah, right on the edge okay. of town. And then just across the track there. Oh, it's across the railroad track. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. No, yeah. I, I, never, I don't remember that. Really. I, uh, I tried to think about it. I saw horse races there, and it seemed to me I did. But I do know about the motorcycle races because they are uh, interested in motorcycles. Mm -hmm. They've been mm -hmm. some pretty snappy mm -hmm. racing. <laughs> well, one thing we, one thing I never ask you, I guess, is uh, uh, it's kind of interesting to ask a person what was his first, what, what was your first car? Oh, a Chevrolet. A Chevrolet. Oh, <laughs> what, what year was it, or when was it? Oh, well, let's see. That was a couple of years after I worked and saved some money. Mm -hmm. So it must have been around 1930, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a Roadster, but I wanted, you know, at that time, the Cushion dance places over in Mendota oh, were yes. popular, and uh -huh. I'd want to take friends along. So I got them put in a, I don't know what you'd call it, a rumble seat or oh, something. Oh, sure, sure, a rumble seat, yeah. So it was yeah. a Roadster with a, with a, rumble, with a rumble seat. seat. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, that was, Kakusha was one of the big places. Yes. Uh, Jim Rowe mentioned uh, Glen Park. Oh, yeah. Glen Park at Sheridan. Mm -hmm. He said the Chicago girls used to come out there and we used to leg it out and look them over, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where we go swimming, of course. In the we river. go swimming there. And of course, part of our recreational program here early in Earl, though, was to skate on the sidewalk, roller skate, until we got rinks. Mm -hmm. Or you could uh, go out to the swimming hole north of town. They called it the DDY. I don't now know. Where was that? Uh, well, just before you get to the old gate, before you get to the bridge going to the uh, toward Gatesses on the road okay. toward, toward Rome. Yeah, yeah. And just yeah. to the right, there was kind of wooded, and it wasn't being uh, used for farmland. Well, uh, the, the one next to the road was there, so the uh, the uh, cornfield was right next to the uh, the swimming hole. But was it a were you swimming in the in the creek then? Yeah. Or it was but a deep we part. Had, we, deep. Had the, we had the cows. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was a deep spot in the creek. Then. That's right, yeah. yeah. And I learned to swim by <coughs> one of the older boys throwing me into the deep water and watching. Oh, yeah. I see. If you make it, you learn yeah, how to I swim. I made it all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I suppose ice skating, maybe in the winter. Uh, ice, skating in the, ice skating in the winter time, and uh, if somebody had a ball and somebody had a bat, we'd play baseball in the lots and uh, yeah. football. And, uh, that, that type of thing, but it was, uh, the recreational program was pretty much according to the end. Oh, and we'd box quite a bit. Oh, you'd box? Yes. Uh, we had a pair of boxing gloves, and then some others had, and uh, we'd box. I remember seeing you box one time. Could have been. You, uh, oh, had, a, you had a student who, uh, who, was always, <laughs> who was always bugging you a little bit. Uh, he uh, kept calling you nicknames you didn't like and things like that. And, I remember one day you put out and said, let's just put on the gloves. Uh, that was uh, friendly, I said. Friendly, right, friendly. Uh, Eddie, uh, Eddie, Myers, Eddie Myers, right, yeah. yeah. And I, uh, I recall, I don't think he ever touched you. No, I, I don't <laughs> think that, I, that was interesting to me because uh, he, he let it be known. He talked to the other one and said, I didn't touch him. <laughs> that's right, that's the way just, I remember Just that. once in a while as we were I was watching, out, giving him a little harder punch just so he'd feel it. I think I think uh, you you got the message across to him. <laughs> well, yeah, I remember that. Ted, it's been nice talking to you. And, well, it's uh, been wonderful talking. Appreciate. To you. Uh, yeah, we should get the together interview. More we, we should do that. More about these things. Thanks a lot, Ted. You're very welcome. <laughs>